Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about whether children can have demons and how we should do deliverance on them. Please help me out really quick before we jump into this. Like the video, stop right now. Hit that thumbs up. You might say, why do you keep asking Isaiah every single video? Because the more likes we get, the more YouTube will recommend this content to brand new people. So do us a favor, like that video, comment down below, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. It really does help the channel more than you guys can understand. Now, first of all, when, it ta when we talk about children having demons, we need to realize that children having demons is a biblical reality. So we're not only talking from experience here, but also talking about what does scripture say and the fact is Jesus actually did deliverance on children. The fact that seven deliverances in the gospel, out of seven, two of those deliverances were, in ch were on children. So the idea of a ch child having a demon is a biblical reality. The first account is in Luke 9, 37, where a boy's father basically brings his demonized son to Jesus' disciples, and they were unable to deliver the boy. Jesus comes down from the Mount Transfiguration and ultimately delivers the boy. And when the disciples asked why they couldn't, Jesus said, this type of spirit only comes out by prayer and fasting. So there's a reason why they couldn't do the deliverance. The second account of a child being deliverance according to Jesus was Matthew 5, 22, when the Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus begging him to deliver her daughter. The disciples said, send her away. She keeps shouting at us. And then you can obviously see here from by what the disciples said, the desperation in her mother. Desperation is often key, a key component to getting delivered or to seeing your child get delivered. So just after this dialogue and conversation Jesus has with her, basically Jesus says, your faith is great, it shall be done unto you. And her daughter was delivered at once. So the first truth we discover is children can have demons. Both of these parents had no problem identifying the source of their kids' problems were demons. Many parents today wouldn't even consider that their children could be demonized, but both of these parents had no problem understanding this. In America, people do have a very hard time understanding children can have demons, but in other countries, the church in Africa, the church in India, the church in South America, they don't struggle with this issue. They understand this concept is biblical and it's real. Children are actually more vulnerable to demons than even adults, and that's because they're dependent on their parents being spiritual guardians and spiritual protection. And oftentimes, as parents, we fail to protect our kids from demons. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 15, foolishness is bound up in the heart of the child. The rod of discipline will remove it far from him. Many don't even believe in America and discipline anymore. Most parents are not even concerned with being their spiritual, spiritual guardians of their kids. They want to be their friends, but God has not called you to be their friends. God has called you to guard your kids spiritually. And many of our children, many of the kids in this generation are assaulted with spiritual things. If you look at all these kids' television shows, just ask yourself, why does it feel like so many kids television shows are full of magic, witchcraft, sorcery, all of these demonic things? Why? 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 Because the devil's assaulting the younger generation. The second thing we learn from Jesus' deliverance on these kids is the presence of demons in our kids can be revealed by the presence of Jesus. And also they can be revealed by what's happening to the kids. So oftentimes when a child has a demon, we can tell by what's going on with them. The boy's father in Luke 9, 39. The Bible says a spirit seizes him and he suddenly screams and it throws him into convulsions so that he foams at his mouth and scarcely ever leaves him. It scarcely ever leaves him and wants to destroy him. Mark 9, 17, the same story. He's a teacher, I brought my son to your disciples so they can heal him. He's possessed by an evil spirit. They won't let him talk. And whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him violently on the ground. He foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth. And in verse 21, it says, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into fire and into water trying to kill him. So we see the child has a demon based on what's going on with the child. This was the same situation we saw in Matthew 5, 22 with the Syrophoenician woman. She said, my daughter is grievously vexed by a demon. And this means to be harassed. So basically she was saying, my daughter is being seriously harassed by a demon. So we see that the parents knew how they're, based on how their kids were acting, whether they had a demon or not. So oftentimes children's behavior will indicate whether they have a demon. Now let me make something clear when it comes to delivering children or children having demons. 
Not everything is a demon. The sin nature wants to disobey the parents. So don't jump on it saying, this is a demon or that's a demon or this is a demon or that's a demon. The Holy Spirit will help you discern and distinguish if your kid has a demon or not, but just know that not everything's demonic and oftentimes the way kids act or respond doesn't have to be a demon. It could also be their sin nature. Let me go through two ways to determine if your child or if a child has a demon. Number one is by spiritual discernment. This is the gift of the Holy Spirit according to 1 Corinthians 12. That's the ability to discern, to discern spirits. We have an entire video on this. Number two is by detection. And that's a way you detect something by looking at evidence. So the way you do that is you look at evidence, like I just said, and you figure out if something's there. This is where the word detective comes in, and that's looking at evidence and coming up with a conclusion. So you use detection. You detect, why well, I'm detecting there's something there because there's evidence, there's symptoms, foaming at the mouth, growling. Growling is a symptom of having a demon. Blasphemous thoughts. Anger when you talk about God, anger in prayer. These are all signs of a demon. The same thing we talk about adults could be applied for kids. Now, if a child is having demonic symptoms, you don't need discernment to know there's a demon there. Okay, let's look at the third thing Jesus teaches us, and that's this. The parents need to take initiative. In both stories, we're going to see the parents taking initiative. You cannot wait until your kid tells you, mommy, I need help. I have a demon, okay? Kids oftentimes are not going to even know they have a demon, but you as an adult need to look at the symptoms, look at the signs and discern it, and then take initiative if your kid needs to get delivered. Again, not all of this is deliverance. Some of these things are not deliverance, so don't just say, oh, my kid is a demon because they're not listening to me. That's the sin nature. It's rebellious towards authority and towards God. So if you know your kid has a demon, um, you need to realize and help them get free. So realize it, help them get free. A child can't go on our deliverance map and set up a deliverance. So as you, their guardian, as their parent, you need to help them set free. The fourth thing Jesus teaches us is that he honors the faith of the parents. In both stories, Jesus honored the parents' faith. The boy's father first went to the disciples when he saw they were unable to help. He pressed through to Jesus. So the disciples couldn't help him. Don't get discouraged if it takes some time to find some help for your kid. If you look at the woman, the disciples tried to silence her. They said, Jesus, tell her to be quiet. But her persistent faith made her eligible for a miracle. So you need to be willing to do whatever you need to do to get your kid delivered. Don't be discouraged. Don't get weary from trying to get help. Do what you have to do because you will see deliverance if you continue to press in. Now, let me talk about two very common ways demons get into children. Remember, the devil's an opportunist and he's looking to get into your, to your kid. Number one is through inherited curses are open doors for demons. And this is the most, most possible or the most common way demons get in. It's very possible demons can come in as their children, as they're being born in the womb, even during birth. Many times when I deal with people in deliverance, the demons say, I've been here since they were born. So most people have demons their entire life. And this is through sins of the parents. Deuteronomy 5, 9, Exodus 25, both make this very clear. When there's things like idolatry, witchcraft, occultism, incest, adultery, these are all open doors. These are all curses that can be in our bloodline and kids can have demons from those curses. The second common way, there's a bunch of ways, but this is very common, is rejection in the womb. When you don't want the baby or you're constantly saying, I wish I never had this kid. I wish we didn't have a baby. I wish it was a boy, but it's a girl or I wish it was a girl, but it's a boy. This is rejection in the womb. Luke 1 15 says John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. So if the Holy Spirit can fill a, a person in the mother's womb, so can a demonic spirit. So I've dealt with many people where the demon came through the womb. Also traumatic birthing experiences can also be an open door trauma, abuse. Even if you're pregnant and you're being abused, that can also be an open door for the enemy to infiltrate your kids. And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Isaiah, this doesn't seem logical or fair. The devil doesn't know what the word fair is. Fair does not exist in the devil's vocabulary. So when it comes to delivering children, casting demons out of kids, fair doesn't exist. When they brought the kids to Jesus, Jesus didn't say, well, this isn't fair. This doesn't exist. He just did deliverance on them because the devil doesn't play fair. The devil plays dirty. So you need to get that because if you're thinking, well, this isn't fair, this isn't fair, you're gonna allow your kid to be demonized and think there's it's no big deal. I'm very, very careful with my kids about magic, about any show with magic we don't allow in our home because I know the devil's after them and magic's an open door. You might say it's innocent, but I'm telling you, I've done deliverance on people where movies, movies, things they experienced, trauma, were an open door to demons. So 
Now let's talk practical. Let me give you a couple recommendations when it comes to the actual deliverance portion. Here's my recommendation. Listen closely. You get delivered first. Listen, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for you. So I would recommend you first getting delivered, not only so you know what the experience is like, but so you humble yourself and realize it's not just for my kid, I also get delivered. All This will also help you breaking generational curses. If you get your generational curses broken and you get delivered, it'll also break some of that off of your kids. So I would highly recommend that you go through deliverance first. It's not required, but it's helpful. Now there's a difference between children's deliverance and adults deliverance in the sense kids can't communicate the way adults communicate, they can't comprehend the way adults comprehend, they can't cooperate the way adults would cooperate. So you need to treat children's deliverances differently. Now, if a kid's between the ages of one to two, you don't need to explain, you don't need to tell them, just do the deliverance on them. Take authority over the demon and do the deliverance on them. If they're ages three to six, I would recommend you explaining to them what is going on. And this is something that Frank Hammond does so well when he talks about kids' deliverances. I want you to see the way he gives an example of how you can help a three to six-year-old through deliverance. He would say something like this, Jane, God says that your body is a temple. So he's explaining to the kid, a special house where his Holy Spirit lives, but bad spirits call your body their house. The Bible says that when a demon comes out of a person, he's put out of the house. So your body is a house, he tells the little kid, where evil spirits wanna live. Now, if you're in a house, Jane, and you wanna get out, how do you get out? And then you point him to the mouth, through the door. Where's the door? Your mouth is the door to your house. So when I tell the demon, Jane, to get out, it will come out through your mouth. So you're just explaining to the kid what the deliverance is in terms they understand. And this is what he says. Jane is then instructed to open her mouth and blow out some breath. This is an, initiates an act of her free will. Now a demon is a breath, which is the Greek word. So let us blow your breath out. And then they show them what it's like when a demon's coming out, coming, it's coming out of the mouth. Another way you can get them out is through coughing them out. And so he says, we practice coughing with them, showing them this is how demons come out of people oftentimes. And that's how the demon comes through your mouth. Your body is God's house and your mouth is the door to the house. Really good stuff here. How else can a demon come out, Jane? Or come, how else can someone come out of a house? Through a window. Your eyes are the window of your house. Have you ever seen someone climb out of a window? And obviously she said yes. If a demon comes out through your eyes or your windows, you may have tears. So if you cry and shed tears, that could also be a sign of demons leaving through the windows, Jane. So they're just explaining to the child without saying, you have to renounce, you have to repent, you have to do, this is not adult deliverance, this is children deliverance, so we explain to them like they're kids. And then you'd say something like, there's two kinds of spirits in the world, there's God's spirit and there's demonic spirits. So the Holy Spirit wants to live in you and the Holy Spirit's more powerful than the demon spirits, and so we're gonna command the bad spirits to come out of you, and when we tell them to go, you can help them leave by breathing them out. And this is just a simple way of leading kids through the deliverance process that need to get delivered and making it applicable to them. So when you're dealing with young kids, this is very important. You don't need to take them through all the steps you take the adult through because oftentimes God is going to bring deliverance on them based on the faith of their parents and God treats children deliverances different than adult deliverances. So now you just start commanding the demons to leave. As they get to the teenage and older, you say, what about like nine, 10 teenage? This is where you start applying the things we teach. We have over 50 hours of teaching on how to cast out demons. But up until that age, you just want to treat them very, very like they're a child and be very careful and don't try to explain so much to them. Don't try to make them renounce and repent and do all that. Just do the deliverance, command the demons to leave. If they start crying and getting angry, that's a normal manifestation. Don't stop it because no, no, it's not them. It's the demon. Remember, the father said the boy convulses, he screeches, he's falling on the ground, it's throwing him in water and fire. The Syrophoenician woman's daughter was vexed by demons. So these are all normal manifestations. Again, as they go into the teenage years, then you can take them through the teachings that we do when free will is involved. Also guys, use wisdom and use discretion when doing deliverance on kids. It's a very important thing. It's a very powerful thing, but just use wisdom. I would also recommend the parents being there. I would not allow my kids to be delivered if I was not there. So try to be there. And if you can do the deliverance, it's even better if the parent can do the deliverance. So I would encourage many of you parents to do your own kids deliverance, get trained, get equipped so that you can do their deliverance and you can be their spiritual guard. Again, be careful what you're letting your kids watch. I know some of you are gonna watch this video say, Isaiah, you're being fanatical, you're being exaggerating. This is in scripture. Kids are demonized in the Bible. If it happened then, 
It can happen now. I want to say a quick prayer over you just to bless you and that you'd go forth with the power and the authority that Christ's given you. Father, we pray for every person listening that your power and your anointing would be with them. I pray that you would train them and that you would equip them and that their children would be delivered. God, we know that it is your desire to set our children free. It is your desire to heal our kids. So Father, we just pray right now in Jesus' name that you would bring deliverance over our children, you'd bring breakthrough over our children, and that you would do what only you can do in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you. You. We pray the power and the fire of God over you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope this blessed you guys. Feel free to share it with a friend or family. Listen, if that thumbs up is still gray, you're doing it wrong. You haven't liked the video. Please leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Have you experienced this? I have experienced people bringing me their kids and their kids being demonized. Deliverance is real, guys. Demons are real. Christ wants to set us free. He paid for this on the cross. God bless you. I hope this video helped you. Like I said, share it with a friend or family, leave a comment, leave a like, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.